Hi everybody, it's Shama Chanel from Design and Session and I'm so excited to go over my first tutorial with you guys. Yay! Right? Uh, <laughs> uh, today we're going to focus on a basic overview of Photoshop, what to expect, um, especially if you're new to the program, and just a quick overview of the tools and the layer panels and, and basically an explanation of how it's used for fashion design or or digital painting for fashion fashion design, excuse me. Um, so I look forward to doing this tutorial. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Also, before I forget to mention later on in the video, be sure to check the description box below. I did create a freebie for this, just for this tutorial. Um, it's a basic cheat sheet for you to, especially if you're new to the program, for you to look over and basically, um, use as a guide just in case you forget a few things along the way which happens a lot when you're still new to a program so yeah let's get started okay so here we are this is a beginning screen and this is just a image i created for my uh, for the tutorial and for the website um, what we're going to do now is start from the menu prompts which you're going to use quite frequently um, throughout the design process and whenever you're just working any on any kind of image in Photoshop and any other program. So we're going to go to File. Um, to create a new file, it's Control N or Command N. And these are just key, keyboard commands that basically um, keep you away from having to go all the way, which is not like a lot of work, but if you're deep into your work, to go move from here to go file this move this it, it just kind of makes your workflow process smoother smoother than I just said that right <laughs> um, anyways for this we're going to open up a file now what I like about Photoshop is it has the most recent tab um, which I have a lot of work most recent um, so what we're going to do is going to open recent and we're going to go to share cloud and we're opening up a file um, this is a file that I did for my last week's post sketch with me episode one I was so excited to do that I actually got some feedback from people which was pretty cool um, it was fun to make and I look forward to doing the next one um, zooming in for it I'm just using my mouse with my graphic tablet which I am using a Wacom um, Intuos Pro 4 tablet um, so to zoom in I'm just I'm just on the eye the zoom tool sorry what I do like about Photoshop is if you hover your mouse over the icon it also tells you so keep that in mind too if you ever get lost um, so to zoom in and zoom out you could either hit of course hit Z to select that tool and then to zoom in, you can you know click with your mouse, or you can hit Control Plus or Control Minus. Pretty simple, right? Good. Um, the next tool is the hand tool. This kind of just helps you move around. So you click and then just drag, and it just kind of helps you to pan around the screen, which is helpful when you're working with something like this. This is a standard hand sketch eight and a half by 11 and so I may be working up here but I need to go back down so you can use this tool um, if you're on your laptop of course you can use your trackpad and just you know zoom really quickly hopefully that didn't make you dizzy <laughs> um, but it's uh, it's it's helpful um, the rectangle tool is kind of self-explanatory you could just click and you make a rectangle I typically don't use these tools too much, but it's just something good to know, just to play around. Um, the text tool is another one, which is important. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, let's see. The, this is the dodge tool. I, you will use this. I tend to say use this sparingly, um, simply because you... If you're not, if you use it a bit heavy, it can be a bit much. 
The dodge tool basically is a highlighter. It highlights. Think of when you're doing makeup and you do highlight and contouring or if you don't do makeup, you know what I'm talking about when they always show Kim Kardashian. Um, when they highlight uh, the face is to bring something out or highlight the skin to bring something out or whatever the case may be. The garment is to shine. It's a sh like reflective shine. Um, using this, and I'm just going to resize. It's on the dodge tool, which looks like, to me, looks like a lollipop. Maybe I'm just hungry. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and you take it and you go above let me do something real quick shift control alt e i just made a copy of the image so we could sorry go directly on it so as you can see it's light lighting that area up but if you're not careful which i always suggest hit protect tones so you click on the tool and it'll come up here and it'll show you you know, the brush, do you want 0% hardness, which I usually suggest. Um, the size of the brush, if you're on a Wacom, you literally just, you know, go to brush size, move up and down. But that's basically it. It's just highlighting the skin. I would use this lightly. There's a way to do this without damaging the sketch. I think if you do this directly on the sketch, it, it hinders you know, what you can do with it. Um, the burn tool, in contrast, it darkens the area. So sink something in. So it's like, I can see this, you know, this is her, this is like digital bronzer. You know, you bronze the skin and add a little muscle tone or whatever you want to call it. This should also be used sparingly because then you could start, your sketch will start looking orangey or reddish peachy and there's different settings that you need to go into to tweak it of course keep the exposure low I would always suggest that um, then you have the smudge tool the smudge tool literally smudges her poor face but you get what I'm saying um, I use this usually when I'm blending colors there's different tools for that but sometimes it's for just quickly and just lightly I want to blend in something. I'll use a smudge tool. Keep I keep the strength typically low, um, and you could change. You could play around with the brush. Um, you could sample all layers, or you could just sample the top layer. If you want to sample all layers, and when I say layers, all the layers in between, which we'll touch into over here. Um, the eraser tool literally erases what we did to the sketch. Um, and so forth. You have these tools we'll, we'll use, but not as often. And the polygonal tool I use to select quick and drag, quick and drag, quick and drag. And what we could do is use it to fill in her face right now. So usually this is typically on black or hit D. Hit the foreground color. You could hit you know, let's, you could paint her face the color of her hair. So we select that color. Basically what we did just clicked and dragged and traced around. If you want to fill something, if you hit shift F5, hit OK, it's filled. And so basically that's how you build a color. Um, if you want to expand on this, let's say you built this color, but you want to keep the detailing on your croquis. All you have to do is go to your blending mode, which is here. Your blending mode is basically how one layer blends upon another layer. Um, for here, I would put multiply. And then you will see it's darker, but you still see the image below. Um, when you play with the layers and how you like stack the layers will show how it blends even better. If I took away her skin, you'll see what I'm talking about. And that's why I believe heavily into layers. So just just for a to deselect, actually, sorry, you hit Control D. So once you take, let's say, I'm still in the polygonal tool and I'm making all these weird shapes. See, it's selected. Sorry, it's selected. So Shift F five. Go 
control D. So we don't want that. So let's undo, edit, undo, right, step backwards or control Z. If you hit select, deselect also, but control D or command D if you're on a Mac works just as well. Um, just a quick touch base on the layers panel. Um, typically when you create a new layer, which is basically think of you having different layers of, of paper on top of one another, you're sketching on tracing paper, um, kind of like those old cartoons when you flip the page, you, you know, one top layer might be the line lines of her eyes. The next layer may be the brown of her eyes and the next layer, you get what I'm saying? And when you build it up, it creates this image. So here's a layer. When you create a new layer, all you have to do is go down here. And remember what I said, hover and click. And there you go. You have a new layer. Usually it's like some random like layer number nine, layer number one, um, which is fine. But I typically suggest renaming them to keep organized. So we'll just say um, blush because we're going to put some blush on her, right? And then you have all of these other layers. Um, from here, we'll go back to the foreground, click it, and I'll show you in a future tutorial how to create color stories. But right now, we're just going to find a brush, and I'm just clicking and dragging the cursor to find a kind of a pinky color I would like to use. So we'll stick with this. We're going to hit B for brush, because paintbrush is another important tool. And you click here, so let's find the brush. So we want a brush that has 0% hardness. What that means is the edges of the brush will be diffused versus a hard brush, which will be um, hard, self-explanatory. So you'll take that, and just to show you, that's the soft brush. And if you drive the hardness to 100%, that's how it comes out. So usually when I'm doing details like um, blush or eyeshadow or or even just kind of slightly trying to blend a couple colors together uniquely, I typically go for the soft brush. So we're just going to paint in her face right here and it's like super terrible makeup, but hey, now it's like, okay, it's overpowering. Remember what I showed you earlier with the face. Hit your blending, layer blending mode, which is usually right here next to opacity. And let's go to multiply. A little better, you can at least see the lines or whatever, um, but it's a little too much. So, what you want to do is if you want to keep that color, but you want to have less of it show, kind of like when you're doing your makeup and you put too much blush, and you're like, okay, let me go over with my makeup brush. Not saying that all of you guys use makeup, but just that kind of that same concept. You need to use something like a blending brush to kind of blend between it, or if you want to just kind of find a way to blend it in so it kind of disappears slightly. That's what the opacity to tool does. So taking the opacity and just drawing it down. And you could always actually to change the opacity, use a number. So if I say, if I hit 10, 20, 30, 40, and then you see it go up and I'm just hitting the keys. So. Um, it's very easy. The, the new Photoshop or Photoshop CC has kind of made it easier to do little things to kind of speed up time and make you more efficient. So we did that. We like it. Whatever. Um, next step is to create a layer group, which is right next to create a new layer. Hover over it and you should see it. Create my new group. Right? It's the same concept. You'll have group one, whatever. So we'll just say makeup. Groundbreaking, right? So click blush and drag up. So you see a white box select around it. And there you go. It's in the layer. So this is just a quick overview of what to expect in Photoshop. I know it's very brief, but hopefully this, you know, the tools and the freebie that I'm providing will kind of help you along in terms of, you know, figuring everything out and, 
yeah, keep me posted and let me know your thoughts. And I look forward to the next tutorial. See ya.